primary school was like everything in that regard for me. All of that story is to say, if God had granted my wish, I would be a primary school teacher. Now, it, no matter how good a primary school is, where you are the teacher, if that is what you are by calling, God could very well give you a wife hmm, that is, you know, maybe that is like, I want to call some people's name, but let me not call you. Now, God can give you a wife that is making money from you, say it, making money from, you understand? <laughs> so, and then they will now say that uh, they are doing humanitarian services. There are some times that your wife can even be a volunteer. Hmm? But what they are paying her to volunteer <laughs> in a month can be more than what they are paying you to teach hmm? in six months. Are you going to leave your calling as a teacher to find a job that pays more than your wife's job? No. That's not the point. So, I don't want to even go into all of the solution, solution thing. It is to say that life is more than money. And headship is more than money. Alright? It is that as the man of the home, God gives you what is required to bring up your children, to, you know, have a roof over your family's head. That is how much God owes you. God does not owe you particular neighborhoods. It's like what I tell to young people when they want to get married, that if you are a believer and you are willing to take the marriage that God wants to make for you, you will never need to fret, you will never need to borrow money in order to marry the reason people have to borrow money as believers in order to marry is because the marriage, the wedding that God is willing to make for them, they are not willing to take it. A certain king made a marriage for his son. You heard me say that story before. That was one of the fundamental things that shaped my orientation going into marriage. From the day I got, it hit me. I knew that my, my wedding, my marriage was not my responsibility. It was God's. The king makes a marriage for his son. But the problem is, would you be willing to accept what God, the wedding God wants to make for you? If you don't want to accept it, you will have to take responsibility for all the other innovations that you want to add to it. So, if what I can afford is to live in Tudumwada on the basis of my day job that I'm doing in the course of fulfilling the ministry God has given to me. Alright? There is for it's almost impossible that there will be any place we live as a person now in Jaws that will be worse than the place that I lived when I grew up. And the point in saying that is that it is from those same places that I grew up that God helped me to where I am at. My children, therefore, cannot be disadvantaged, objectively speaking, because I don't live, let's say, in the best part of town and whatever, they don't go to the most expensive school. So eventually, it will come down to saying that there is a level at which you establish responsibility. And then there is a level beyond that which it is now luxury. God expects the man to be responsible, all right? The man is not commanded, the man is not obligated to provide luxuries. But the man cannot not be responsible. So wherever the opportunities for luxuries would come from, that is simply an addition. The reason why they live in that neighborhood is not because the man is irresponsible. Right? Uh, the, the, it is simply because the woman is one of the persons working in the home and then on the basis of the monies that come through the woman in addition to whatever the man makes it means that they are able to live in a place that they would not have been able to live if it was only the man that was making money or if it was the man that was making more money as the case may be but it does not mean that if this woman was not working this family you know will be begging 
Do you get my point? So long as a man is responsible and the man is living out divine ordination, living in God's ordination for him, first and foremost, to say that headship has nothing to do with luxuries, the provision of luxuries, or making more money than your wife uh, for a very long time. Uh, for a very, very, very long time. It did look to me. Especially when I was thinking that I was going to be a primary school teacher, I was not hoping that my wife would be any less than whatever she was going to be. I was uh, actually thinking that that would be God's method of... Uh, eh? <laughs> of solidarity with my... <laughs> with my classroom... Uh, teaching aspirations. All right? So, as a person, uh, uh, biblically, there isn't anything that I see that is wrong in that scenario. And personally, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Like, we can always do it more money for God's sake. And if we are a unit as a man and wife, at that point, it really wouldn't matter where the money is coming. So long as both of you are doing the things that you should be doing on that board. When that money comes eventually, it is therefore now our money. And if your marriage is what it is meant to be, um, how that money is spent would not be your money, my money kind of thing. And sometimes there are insecurities, but that's a local problem. It's not a theological issue. All right? It's a local problem. It's the persons involved that are having that problem. It's, the problem is not a biblically founded problem in any way, shape, or form. A man is supposed to be able to provide for his home. That's what the man 